We're at Algonquin! We finally got that stuff set up. <laughs> that was hard. This is our campsite. We're not using about 90% of it. <laughs> but there's no fires here right now, so we figured having it nice and kind of close together would be good. We got a little shade with our chairs. This is the first time we ever set up a tarp, so. And there's Maddie's bum in the, in the tent. I wanna put on my shorts. And we're gonna take a little walk. And we're in Two Rivers Campground, which is pretty much my it's favorite campground. What? The bed's almost empty. Nah, that's a good sign. Our bed's almost empty, good sign. What's up, we're going down to the park, or the beach, whatever you wanna call it, at Oak Walton. This is don't film people. <laughs> oh, people don't like that. It's camping. Filming no everybody. One wants to be filmed. <laughs> YouTube people, YouTube. Everyone knows YouTube. Come on. Yes, everyone knows YouTube. I'm on YouTube, you're on YouTube, we're all on YouTube. <laughs> Cannot record still pictures when steady shot. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Record. Uh, is this the way to the beach? No. Nope. Uh, okay, let's turn and try that way. Thank you. You're welcome. Now Melissa's got the camera. Hey Maddie! What's we have on? been fighting the entire time. Melissa doesn't know how to take fucking any fucking uh, directions at all. <laughs> like, like trying to set up the tarp, big time bad. Trying to get to the campsite, big time bad. <laughs> like, we'll get better at this. Jeanette and my dad definitely, you know, went through it. So, we're gonna... Go down this way and hope for the beach. Do you know where the beach is? We're gonna venture into the outhouse because I've got to pee. Ooh. Who loves outhouses? I love these little glass doors though. Alright. Sometimes you can get chipmunks that have fallen. Oh, it smells really good in here. Okay, can't see this stuff. Well, we're at the beach. That's one of the changes boxers. So beautiful right now. And it's like five o'clock. I'm actually really hungry because we haven't eaten all day, but this is good. Our first day kind of wasted because it took us a long time to get here, but that's okay. We're here and I'm excited. And I wonder if that building over there is a, Matt needs a single bathroom and he literally will not go to the bathroom when he's camping. But uh, I see a big building over there that could be a single bathroom. We'll see. Well, we just finished our first campsite meal. Yes, it was delicious. Yes. I didn't cook at all. You to cook helped. We had hot dogs and we had macaroni and cheese. It was awesome. And then we went we went swimming before that. It was really good. I will get some shots of the lake tomorrow. And there are so many chipmunks here, so I'll definitely have to pick up some more chipmunky. No. <laughs> I don't have any more peanuts. Give me another peanut. Oh. Oh, you're gonna take that one back, huh? Cause, like, watch where he goes, Matt. See, right there. I smell fire. Why do I, think I smell you guys fire? Have Why do I smell fire? Snow and confident. Come here. Oh. <laughs> Good morning guys. I am just starting my makeup and I really wanted to record it. Here, I'm going to set you down so I can speak a little easier. I really wanted to record it, but honestly, it may let me turn off Emily Noel. 
in my background. Um, I'm literally, let's just pan into my shot here. I'm literally, I just got my hot chocolate over here and I, you know, I'm, I've got some new makeup in here that um, I want to show you guys. But um, yeah, I'm just, I used the Youth to the People. This is a new brand that I haven't used before. I got this like deluxe size sample and it's their um, Adaptogen Deep Moisture Cream very very nice and then I definitely need an acne clearing because I'm not washing my face properly I'm not using the same products I always use because I'm camping so I have the Murad uh, acne clearing solution with me as well so I am going to just finish up my face I'm going to do my foundation all that kind of stuff and then I want to do like a what did I bring what's in my bag for you guys instead of like the full tutorial so yeah stay tuned for that well, guys, I want to do a what's in my bag, but uh, Maddie woke up. <laughs> so I'm going to start breakfast first, and then when we come back, I will do a what's in my bag for you guys. This is the makeup I have on today. I used the Maybelline, um, their cushion foundation, which was really nice. I think it's a little dark for me, but I kind of like it since we are, you know, um, I'm like tanner and whatever. But yeah, I am cooking some hashy browns right now, and because I have two, only have two grills, I have to cook the hash browns first. Then I'm going to put them in a little container, and Matt will probably eat them right away. Then I'm going to have to cook the bacon in a pan, which I have not done in years. And then we have the other one for the eggs. And then I'm going to have to toast on here as well. Uh, yeah, so um, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> guys well I got the hash browns done they were a little bit dry but hey and I'm finally cooking the bacon in the pan and then I got this thing that's made for s'mores it's gonna be perfect for toasting the bread on my grill since we cannot have a fire um but yeah so I'll you know throw it back when I have a little more uh food to show you oh and I'm sorry if there's any vegans we eat meat yeah. all right so uh we finished breakfast I didn't get any more shots of that um we ate bacon and eggs, it was pretty easy. And we're actually just at the Lake of Two Rivers store, which is a store in Algonquin Park. All you have to do is look it up. It's so cute and adorable. I put, I picked out Maddie's eagle shirt. I thought, thought it, it was pretty. And here we are, Lake of Two Rivers. We're gonna go inside. So we've got all this camping stuff but you never want to really buy anything here unless you're super desperate. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. The little girl cheese. Let's see, a marshmallow tree fork. Oh, so you can hold several. What's this? Pocket saw? Now oh, that's kind of cool. That's like so you like... Ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh, that one is cute. Oh, that one's cool. I like that one. That was really cool. Oh, look at all the cute little Mickey Knacks. Oh, that one's so cute. And then they have food. None of the hot dogs do you want. Don't ever buy your kids toys from here. Let me, let me just see. $12.98. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. That's weird. 
there's no vices on any of this stuff, that's kind of worrying. Oh my goodness, look at this guy. <laughs> wow, this is lighter than I thought it would be. I know there's no, no inter introduction to this, but we're at the logging museum. Oh, there's a log here at a place. This is where the horses would be. Better in here than the other place. <laughs> it is actually. Well, <laughs> this stuff has been here since I was like probably wow, six or this seven. Would suck, so this would suck for horse feet. Yeah. And there was two horses to a pen. Mm, I'm gonna say hey. I don't know if they would have been able to afford oats for the horses in the winter time, but there is an extra oats barrel kind of thing. All right, let's go to the next exhibit to square a log. No, they didn't have a chainsaw back then. I mean to do the exhibit. No, they didn't have chainsaws, period. That's why they have this. They had to use a wood chipper. Oh, well, yeah, of course. What the hell is that? Three, four, five, We're at the exhibit. What the heck does this thing do? I forgot. It picks up the logs, doesn't it? Log bundler. Yeah, picks up the logs before they square them. And yeah, and then over here, I don't know why they have the horse all the way over there. Because he's pulling the crane. Oh, because I was going to say, I thought it got hooked up here. Then do they carry it off here? Yeah, and then the horse would come over here, he'd get hooked well, up to there. Have other horses. Whatever, either way. Oh, see, they've got like the log hooker. They'd have to pick up the logs, and that'd be heavy. Probably Horses were used to skid here. logs. <laughs> yeah, they obviously were like, hey, because they're up on top of the crane. Or it was like a downtime, and they're like, hey, let's take a picture. And, like, <laughs> and then here's a completely squared log. This place is cool, but it's even better when there isn't as many people on the trail. But hey, you know, what do you do? And see, this is their completely trimmed log. Think about how much that would waste. Like, this log was probably out to, like, here. I think we're getting the point now, people. <laughs> what? We'll just keep cutting logs. Well, I think this is just <laughs> supposed to show what it would look like, you know? Like, that's why they got so many forest fires. That's some premium firewood right there. Well, that's what I was thinking. Premium. Dry as a bone and go up and freaking Oh, it. there's people up here, so I'm just gonna, like, not film them. <laughs> so first, they had this one. So first, they had this one, which would clear the roads. Okay, the then they went to that plow to clear them. And this was so that they could actually ice the roads up so that, and they would dump water out into the road so they could get it extra icy. And up there is a big, huge tank that they would put water in. I guarantee they were pulling it once winter and it was an icy, really icy spot and the horse was just like doop to doop right over it. Like, one know. of the coolest exhibits was the alligator. Or is the alligator. It's the one I'm looking at. You're looking at right now. And I think it pulled the logs down the river if I'm not much diagram. Oh! That is not safe. <laughs> Well, it's been here since I was a kid, so like 20 years. Number 71, William M. 
look at this. There's actually some ducks right there. Look at Maddie, there's some duckies. All aboard the boat. Look at the duckies. They're clean. Really like cute, eh? Stuff. Where's their mom? I don't know. Oh, is that, is that her? Yeah, that that's is her. Pretty small. Yeah, that's Where's her. Where's your mother? No, the other babies are really small. That's her. I think that's a different sort of duck. I wonder if I can get a close up. Don't lean on that damn railing, honey. That just got me all thing. Yeah, that is mummy. So we've got the log dam where they used to shoot logs down. Let's do it. I'll put my book here. Recording. Recording. And log dam. See, and they'd send the logs going down here. Now, back in the day, people used to throw change in here and all the kids would jump in from over here and get all the change. <laughs> and it would go all the way out there. And yes, we were feeding the fish. That just popped my head. I think it's supposed to be. It always has been when I was a kid. Get out of the way, Maddie. We're going to come to one of the sad parts now because obviously logging is dangerous and a lot of them died from falling into the water and getting locked in by the logs. So they actually have a little post. Now, when I was a kid, they also had a pair of sh uh, boots there, but because I think they were probably sharp and whatnot. But yes, many loggers perished, and I'm assuming had to be buried at the logging camp. Memori oh, in memor in memoriam? Never heard of that. Death has never death was never far away for the river drivers. Many were swept away in bone chilling rapids or crushed when they released log jams. Their cocked boots were nailed to a nearby tree and their bodies buried beside the river which was which had killed them. So sad. It's terrible. And this used to say, Rest in peace, Emil Hard. He died June 12, 1903, on the Petawa River, one mile below Cedar Lake. 13. The Inventions. Oh, it's the, the log cutter. I am kind of like obsessed with this because I think that would be just so cool. From here back to the visitor reception building, you will see how the technology and scope of Algonquin's logging gradually changed from its earliest beginnings in the 1830s up to the present. One major innovation was the crosscut saw in the 1870s. Before that, only axes had been used for felling trees because saws always jammed. The problem was solved by the addition of special teeth called ranker, rakers to remove sawdust and shavings. Oh, so all these little ch -ch -ch would let the sawdust come out. Cool. Number 15, the saw log camp. This is like better innovation like you know they're coming up with better things they're clogging cracks plugging holes everything enter here better. for horses eye view and this is all the stuff that they would do to the horses making those things for their you know, they would bring the 
worth in here. They'd sit them here, and then they'd have people on the outside putting like shoes on. Yeah, those shoeies. Oh, each one has like a. And combing them. Each one has a name. Because it says 79. I'm assuming in the book. Sharpening their tools. <laughs> and then the next one I'm assuming over there is another oh, kennel area. Oh yeah, they tell you not to touch it either. This stuff has literally been here since I was a kid, like since I was like eight years old. <laughs> oh, they fixed this one it looks like. Oh no, each one has oh, this so must that's be what they did. Original. I think that might be original. I don't think they have. Maybe they just used something else and that's what they have now that they could have used. Well, they got everything better except for the floor. The horses still would have had a crappy floor experience. Because it's just cut up logs and there's like holes in between all of these. And sleeping on this, I'm assuming, wouldn't be that comfortable. I'm sure they would, and I'm sure they did give them like blankets oh, and all that hay stuff. All, the floor to cover all, that. oh, that feels nice. Now that I think about it, it was definitely hay. It's all looking the sunny, Maddie. We should go swimming if we can. We will. We can go at like three-ish. I want to at least go to the visitor center. Fall. No. Well, I want to at least go to the visitor center. This was their eating area. This is the one I always loved. Okay, this is gonna be loud. I don't know how to do it, you do it. Oh, that would be so loud. And this would be their eating quarters. And I remember them saying something about this in the book, about this in the book that they would have like cigarettes and stuff like that sold and new. Well, look at they actually have picnic tables and stuff for And the, hey, look at that, it's contained. It'd be contained, no smoke in your face. I'm gonna assume no. no. I'm gonna assume that this would have been like a place where they would have put bread and no. I don't know about that. And this, I'm thinking, is probably going to be the bunk beds. Yes, this is sleeping quarters. Two men to a bunk. So there'd be four guys in each set. So two guys to each bunk. No, it's two guys to each bed. No. Read it. It said no. It says it in here. Here, hold this, and I will show you. You can turn it off. Okay. Okay. See right here. It says inside we'll see a rough warming. This was really cute. I had to show this. That the old style tools, wrenches, a furnace. Oh, they pull logs in Oh, there you go. And it had to have, I'm assuming, a furnace. People have written stuff on it. I think that's kind of disrespectful. That's kind of disgusting. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Matt finds that amusing. Oh, I don't. Hilarious. This crazy what? chainsaw. Who's holding that in? Oh, oh, so two people hold it right That's there. That's what I'm saying. Who's holding that in? That guy's brave. <laughs> that looks like something out of a video like, game. Why is it spiked there? Um, could not tell you. Is that just for like, hey guys? Yeah, because look, look it up in this picture. There's no spikes. Oh, they just died. Oh, 
Matt trying to get into a car that is locked. They always lock these. This is like new, modern day. Not modern day, but like more modern. <laughs> Could be. And then we come to the more, what would you call it, more modern logging history. And this one you can hop in. So, yeah, Maddie's wanting to hop into something. And yes, you can turn all the little gadgets. Look at this, look at this, look at this. I guess this is some child shit here. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, there is no Puddles working up and everything. And then I got the engine there. Ooh, I'm zooming in. I didn't even mean to. Keep trying to take pictures. And then I got your gauges here. Is it still recording? Yep. I think so. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna do a short little clip of this because I've got like one minute left on my memory card. There's a little teeny bit left in the trail, but this is pretty much the bulk of it. I will record a little it's bit on my train. phone, but it's the train, it's and you can actually go in here. I'm just gonna cut and then I'll roll. Actually, you know what? I might have some time, so I'm gonna try and get up here first, and then it might cut out on me. And then this is the big old train. You would put your coal in here. Lombard Park Hardwood Forest in the month of June. This habitat is dominated by the tree whose leaf appears on the Canadian flag, the sugar maple. This tree is so well adapted to growing on the soils left by the glacier in the park's western uplands that it often accounts for over 90% of the trees present. The sugar maple has a far-reaching influence over other living things in the forest. The yellow birch, for example, is another tree that grows here, but it is relatively scarce because the roots of its tiny seedlings cannot penetrate the thick layer of dead sugar maple leaves on the forest floor. This particular yellow birch got established only because the original seed happened to land on the exposed, rotting stump of a white pine taken by loggers many years ago. While they are still on the trees, the leaves of the sugar maple exert an even bigger influence. The summer shade they cast is so complete that growth of green plants is severely limited. In fact, some summer wildflowers of the hardwood forest don't even have the green chlorophyll that normally prevents plants to capture the Yeah, everything's real. They get run over all the time. Oh, Maddie. Everything's real. Oh. Oh, see the little fox in the upper? Or in the. What is that called? Ferret. Ferret? Or. Uh, and the fox. Oh, this is my favorite exhibit. The bear with her cub. They're not actually all that big. No, and that's why I think people play with them. That's terrible. How did they get a cub? Mm -hmm. Because they get run over. No, they do say everything they use in Algonquin Park is real. <gasps> Maddie! Look, the little babies. Those are not real. Neither is the salamander, neither is the turtle. But the bird, the gopher, the bird up there. No, the turtle won't be there. I'm not sure. It looks kind of painted. It kind of looks plastic. Yeah. It? What is that, do you think? Let's see. 
Let's see what it is. That's called an ermine. Nine young. How many young do they? Oh, how many young do they produce? Oh, okay, so what do you say about the turtle, Maddie? I'd say two hundred. Two hundred? No, no. How many do they do in one sitting? About sixty. And we've got ten eggs. Oh. Yeah. And oh, I guess that's just a small egg. the yellow spotted salamander, though, has 125 eggs. So people are gathering. That's fine. Look at this. Look at the beaver all the way up there. And that's why I love. Pine, Could be. Oh yeah, it is a porcupine. That's what I mean. Like that. Like you see something different every time. Like because they like put little things too. I think I freaked him out a little bit. <laughs> He's got mud, and there's that big snapping turtle. Wow, that one's pretty good. Huh? Yeah, that's cool. And the birds. And then they go, they go down over the water. And up, and up. Oh, look at it. We can start calling it just like that. Like uh, rabbits and yeah. mice and whatever. Another one going out. Yes, there is. Oh, there's nothing in here. Should be something in here. Oh yeah, there's a few. They're hovering. I can't put on my all the things. It's so warm. It's crazy because the song isn't Yeah, one of my favorite exhibits. They used to actually have like little earphones that you could put in and they would tell you what the natives were doing at the time. Like she's fixing a cut with um, wool. Like it's from those, it's from those, um, those things that you find in the swamp. They're brown at first, pussy willows or something like that. And then he was doing the fish on the side there. Oh, he's pretty cool too. I know they made him quite a happy guy. Huge forests provide all the light necessary. The bunks were built of poles, and the cost of the lot would be about three hundred dollars. But the crew would often put up a shanty in the space of three days. It took a lot of wood to heat one of those shanties, and but the fire got low during the cold winter night. This is the train exhibit. <laughs> See, it's supposed to be like you're, you're riding on the train. See, right there, Algonquin Park. Wah, wah. Oh, we've always called it Algonquin Park. Hmm? Always called it
<laughs> All right, and like this is pretty much the end. This is for Santa? Yep. Oh, how pretty is that? This is your table at the Highland Inn in 1930. Ties are expected for the men, please, and the dresses for the ladies. Ugh, I wouldn't have enjoyed ties and dresses. He didn't want the shelf one, he wanted the full one. What's he doing, Gary? Probably waiting to see if he'll toss my other one. Come on, 
Come on, Chippy. Oh, that's so Chippy. Just go. I know. Come on, Baby. Come on. I can't help you Thank you. 